to the second round of the Straight Line Motorsports Mazda MX-5 Cup Championship here. I am your host, and for today's set of events, STM underscore RDZ. And unfortunately, YouTube has not been our most reliable friend for today, so unfortunately, this is not a live stream, but of course this will be updated, uh, uploaded at a later time. And by the time that you guys are watching it, it is uploaded right now. So you can see there, due to PS PlayStation Network issues, the race will be recorded and uploaded later. There'll be no live stream and footage for this race. So unfortunately, that's kind of how things go. Sometimes stuff happens, and unfortunately, we have to resort to other um, ways of getting the races recorded. So other than that, qualifying underway here. Seven cars here to start of Doug Barrow in one of the two Costa-sponsored Mazda MX-5s. And then you have Bar 27, who did very, very well from last time here at Suzuka in a very hectic and very chaotic Pro-Am GT3 race here from last weekend. So taking the breather, cooled it down a little bit, and now obviously gets to have fun for Mazdas. And then we have the 69 sister Costa Mazda in the form of an air racer who will drive that car as well. And then we have SLN Polymer, the number 24 Mazda who finished second in the pro race last time out, and he will be looking for some dirt, and he will be looking for some very serious points after his late race incident at Grand's Hatch. So he will be very fuming for some extra points here today. And we have James Head in the number seven who walked away with a podium in race one, but unfortunately did not have the greatest race. Actually, no, I state that. He got, he didn't do well in the first race, but he got a podium in the second race with a strong second, right behind the other car of Kyle. So, and then of course we have Elliot Fagner in the 64 Mazda, who's getting himself a little too cozy to the front Mazda, which is the 78 of TJIS 78. That will round out the grid of seven cars here for today's events at Suzuka. So as these cars round about on screen right now, the lap times are very, very long here. You're looking about around two minutes and 40-ish seconds here, 40 seconds-ish here at Suzuka. So qualifying laps. I only get about, I want to say three, because, you know, qualifying will be crucial for these cars, and it's a very, very long call towards 130R as Doug Barrow goes, and it looks like Bar 27 is getting past the Mazda of Harris, and of course Harris doesn't really want to get involved in any instance and have to go to the pits, not this much really, so everyone's clean through. Doug Barrow through the chicane, coming to the final corner for the start of his first flying lap. We need to walk more with them. A very late apex in these cars. So we'll go on board with the driver of Doug Barrow. Very consistent day as well, coming into the weekend, fifth on points. Very, very good. I actually state that he's coming in fourth on points because third and because there are two people who are tied in points for third. It will be James Head and it will be SLM Polymer. Unfortunately, race two Grand Hatch winner, Kyle 22. Unfortunately, he has ceased his operations in the Straight Line Motorsports Championship Champion. Straight Line Motorsports leagues and unfortunately he will not be taking part in any further events. Other than that, we move on down the field. Elliot Fagater comes into the points in this weekend as championship leader by about four points over the second place car of Kyle 22. But go down a little bit more to 26 points, and you have Polymer and James Head, who are now theoretically second, tied apiece. So that's about a 13 points gap to these guys between first and third. Don't include, or do you include Kyle, he's not racing, of course. So 
Elliot will be looking for some points to take home as well and maybe extend this championship. Palmer now coming through. James Head and TJ, yes, these guys, they, have, they are in a train, but if you think about it, they are going, yeah, you can see they're on the mini-map on the top right of your screen. There's a train for me, but you are keeping a distance to make sure that these guys can get the flying laps and get through the air. Doug Barrow is still the, fir the first man out in front the first one in the 13 Mazda, as you said, a benchmark lap. It will be interesting because we are now actually under five minutes to go in this session, and these guys are about to complete only their first lap. So it will be this lap, and then the next two laps where they have to complete a giant lap. They go through the chicane now. It looks like Elliot Fagenberg is right behind the Mazda of bar 27. So Doug Barrow in the 13. What's his representative lap time here? It will be a 2.43.8. Let's see what everyone else is going to do. Hair raising will go 8 tenths quicker. Elliot will actually go 1.4 seconds quicker than Doug Barrow. And Palmer will slop in. And James Head at the back, near the back, will go into second. So... First flying laps are done. Elliot Fagater, who is up ahead of James Head by nine tenths of a second, a little bit more as well. So James Head with a good second place, 242.5, with a half a second advantage up on Hair Razor. He takes the third with a 23.070, but is a whopping 1.4 seconds behind. Elliot, the post center, and it is very, very difficult to make up a lot of time here, considering the speed of these cars. They're very good track cars, but you have to keep a very, very tight line well. SLM Palmer, the 243.5, a further half a second away from the next guy, but 1.8 off of Elliot Bagger. So he is going to have to do some new some hard work if he wants to match James Head or even better himself over James Head, being close to Elliot. Doug Barrow down in fifth, 2.2 off the base. Bar 27, 2.45, all the way down to sixth, so he's had an incident somewhere in the first. And TJIS had an incident, who appears to have had an incident somewhere, is a whopping 5.7 off the pace. So, none of these guys are using trash control because, you know, these cars don't, they don't have a tendency to well, spin the rear wheels, but if you're, if you're too tedious on it, you can force a spin and maybe force a drift deja vu style. say that again, just one more lap to put another third and final flying lap in. Elliot Fagner is getting very, very hasty indeed with Hair Razor, so that's not good there. He's compromised Hair Razor's exit, and it's compromised Elliot's exit at the same time. Doug Barrow moves into third, and this is going to be interesting here as Barr moves up into fifth, demoting Palmer. Palmer moves up into second, so that's a very good showing right there. This is going to be a very, very interesting development right here at TGIS with a 244. Oh, and it looks like Barr has messed up his qualifying, and so has the pole sitter! And he goes sideways, so Elliot, with that slide, I think has no chance of making that up. Elliot now half a second up on Pollard, who had a very good launch making up 1.4 seconds on that lap, and he's gonna get held up again by the 27. He flashes the lights in frustration. Barr needs to get out of the way. Oh, and Palmer has pulled off. That's the end of his session, so that's not an improvement gonna happen right there. 
Oh, super frustrating for the 24, who was putting on a very, very good showing. And it looked like he had to improve. But you can see the damage on the front of the car. And obviously, things did not go in the right direction for him. So the man, yep, you can see Barr just slowing up. He might be typing something in the chat to apologize to Polymer. It doesn't look like it. Polymer now is going to get out of the way of TJIS. So with Polymer Elliott not able to improve, we do turn our attention to the number seven of James A. He did have an improvement last time, but checking sector times, he has not improved this lap. Doug Barrow, though, the first sector he did improve. This one he didn't. So let's see if he can knock off a second or so in the 13, coming to second three for a 130R. Listen to the raw power of the Mazda. Very, very fun cup car indeed for one day series like this. So we cross the line now, just 42 thousandths of a second shy. Final chicane now. It's coming on through. And he's got to really hug that apex right now for the best possible lap. What is Doug Barrow going to do? He's not really hugging the apex. What can he do? Two tenths down he is. That's not an improvement. But James said, what can he do in the number zero? Can he improve on something? He's going to go sideways. So I think he knows that his lap must, must have been done and dusted. And Palmer will go to the pits. A lot of these guys are in the pits. And that will be the end of qualifying. No improvements for anybody on that last lap. So there are your results. Elliot Fagner with pole position by half a second. And we immediately move straight into the race. Race one of the MX5 Cup Championship. So first grid, of course, will be regular qualifying. And then the second grid will be debating on the reverse grid of race one finishing result. You can see the grid very excited to get underway. Seven cars will take the start of this grid. Let me get out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so there are the red lights. Five red lights to go. And as Formula One says, it is lights out and away we go. Elliot Fagner getting a strong start and immediately covers the inside line. The slow acceleration of these cars. Look at look at that. You you get Elliot who's literally driving still on the pit exit pit out exit, however you want to say it, drives to the pit exit road and just completely covers that inside line. So any big changes? Nothing there. It appears that the grid was remaining the same for when the race did start. This is a 30 minute race. And you have, I believe, just about, I want to say about 12, 11, 12 laps ish, maybe. Maybe not the pace of these cars. There's just a really, really nice train of cars here for the top five. Bar have dropped off, and TJIS have both dropped off. Let's go on board with the number 69 of Airazor, who continues to follow, the, follow this train. Oh, and James Head gets a little squirrely out of that corner. Elliot's going to try and cover it. Is there a move being made up here? Oh, James Head might be looking at a move for second into the hairpin on Esla Palmer. Palmer covers that inside line. Does it very well. There's contact almost made between James Head and the Mazda of Doug Barrow. And once again, James Head had Palmer are once again side by side out of the hairpin. Who's going to carry the momentum into the into Spoon? It looks like James Head. Can he make a move? It looks like he's on the inside on board with them. And number seven Mazda is going to dip it down the inside of Spoon and does it the right way, better than Sebastian Vettel did last year, of course. guys are fighting is giving the Elliot the chance to make it the top.
behind Boss and Elliot. He doesn't want to get on the grass because worst case scenario is just like So 130 yard, who's gonna put the power down? Is it gonna be a full throttle corner? Yes, it is gonna be a full throttle corner. All of these guys in the top five are not gonna give him room of inch, but James Head's gonna probably look and move down to the inside. Can he make something there? Oh, and there's almost contact. Palmer gets a little sideways. Doug Barrow has to check up a little bit, and so does Air Razor. He gets the, he gives him the bump draft on his teammate. Air Razor does. And look at this trans, and look at this line right up here. Elliot Fagner going wide, but Palmer is on the inside pit wall, and he's literally right up against it as, as he's got the two Costa Mazdas right behind. James Head's going to be looking at a move on the championship leader on the outside of turn number one. Can he make something there? Oh, and it looks like James Head is going on to the Astor, but saves it. That's something you don't see every day. And Polymer has all of a sudden just completely got this train back, the locomotive to caboose style for the top five. Mark 27 and TGIS. They're not far behind, but they are a little ways behind. So, look at this train of cars right around here. We'll go up over the 64. Look at that. We're about one, two, three, four other Mazdas right behind the race leader at the moment. And we're only on lap two. So, a lot of close racing for all of these guys. James Head still defending second and having to charge up on Elliott. Think about all the pressure that James Head is having to withstand inside the helmet and in the cockpit of that Mazda. Not only worrying about the race leader, but having to worry about three other Mazdas as well. Oh, and James Head goes on. Oh, and James Head is wrecked out of Degner 2, and he gets, and thank God he's ghosted, but oh my goodness me, that is some serious damage on the number seven. I did not mean to give the commentator's curse to James Head about the pressure, but unfortunately the pressure looked like to get looked like it got to him out of second place. And he is coming to this weekend third in points. So that is major championship implications for this race. So the damage is on light, it has worn off, but now all of a sudden we only have four Mazdas instead of six. Oh, and a lot of these guys going on the Astro Turf right there. Oh, and look at this! Doug Barrow benefiting from the mistakes of Elliot and Palmer has jumped into the lead, and his teammate Hair Razor, can he think something happened here? On board now with the 69. He doesn't have a slipstream, but he does have the momentum. He's going to try and force Palmer on a tighter line towards 130-yard. Palmer and Hair Razor going side by side. What can these guys do? Elliot now with the flicker of the lights. He's got a better tighter line towards the chicane. He's gonna flip it down back to the inside. Doug Barrow, can he make a switch back happen? Oh, and Elliot's gone a little wide and a switch back is done, but there's contact made between these guys. This is insane racing for all of these guys. Doug Barrow now has got to play the defense car, going down to the inside line with a pit wall. He's gonna do that line. Hair Razor now gonna take a line close to the racing line. Palmer and Elliott gonna form right behind him. Elliott now with the slipstream. Gonna go for the outside of turn one. Nothing doing there. Right on the back bumper. Oh, and there might have been contact as Doug Barrow has gone wide and he's sideways. Oh, you can see the flick of the lights at least three times, four times, five times, of course. So that might have been some contact induced action right there for turn one. And this is just amazing, amazing racing that we're seeing here for all of these guys. Just incredible stuff, incredible racing. But some stuff, oh, and Doug Barrow gets it onto the grass. He's had to maybe understeer a little bit into Palmer, who is trying to make up some lost ground after his incident at Brands Hatch. Hoping that one does not repeat here, of course. Oh, there's a bit of contact, and Palmer has gone wide. Oh, and Doug Barrow has spun him off. Oh, that is some very frustrating things, and it's going to be allowing TGIS and Bar 27 to move up one more position. So TGIS, who was in seventh for most of this race, has all of a sudden found himself into fourth. And the two Costa Mercedes, Costa Mazda's Doug Barrow. So 
now that might be a penalty coming in the form to Doug Barrow for that incident. He is going slow, and TGIS now has fought, found himself up into third, which is quite the bizarre thing. Oh, look at this scrap right now for Ford Palmer now. And, and you know what? I'll tell you what. I think with that incident, Doug Barrow was trying to give the position back by slowing down, not getting in anybody's way. So that's a very gentleman-like thing for Doug Barrow to give that position back. He does not want to do that. And it looks like that Esla Palmer has given him the flash, the flasher. So that might be a sign of him saying thank you for the position. Bar 27 going a little wide, not trying to get in any, way, any of these guys' way. But now it has just, it has just left Hairraiser and Elliot Fagener to fight for themselves. But once was a train of cars, has now all of a sudden just grown down to just these guys pacing on their own laps. A 242.8 for Elliot, so he will take the fastest lap of this race. James had about 17 seconds down. lost time because this has major championship implications of course for all of these guys including this man who is coming into this week at third on points and so as Esla Palmer who's actually picked up a two second penalty so that is not good news right there for the 24 who is trying to make up lost ground and I'm just noticing on the paint scheme of the 70 and the 24 that they look like that they're teammate cars. So Palmer going for a, a purplish color, same livery, but Palmer ha Palmer has that purplish scheme where TGIS has the line turquoise kind of scheme right here. We actually might be having a battle here all of a sudden for third because Palmer has quickly closed that gap down to three tenths. Oh, there might have been a teammate argy bargy moment right there. Oh, and these guys might not see each other because they are literally bumping the moment with each other. And all of a sudden, Doug Barrow is going to take, have to take some desperate action to make sure that these guys, well, they were hitting each other, but when you get movement like that in game, that's a sign of you can't even see the other opponent. Palmer now, Palmer still with that 1.9 second penalty, so he's going to have to slow down and swim that at some point. Considering that there's now only less than 20 minutes left on the clock. Oh, Jesus, my lord, so... Oh, Doug Barrow has gone wide, and he looks like he saved it. Yes, he has saved it, so that's a good recovery drive for Costa so far to get it out of the last turn and off of the outer edge of concrete. Elliot still continues to lead and is still continuing to set the pace with purple sectors in sector three. So hair razor now in the 69 Mazda trying to do the work and catch back on up to the race leader. Oh look at this little scrap right here between TGIS and Doug Barrow, who is and it looked like Palmer. Oh, and it has showed 9 tenth penalty. He's picked up another penalty somewhere. So, not a good day so far for Palmer, who is still trying to get back and find some lost ground. But he cannot do it if he keeps accumulating penalties. Same thing's happening for TGIS, so can TGIS not see anybody? So that's an interesting way of not losing any spots. And by the looks of things, yeah, you can certainly tell. <laughs> they are really barging into each other. And if you want some close racing, well, you're literally getting it. Because these two are really touching wheels, touching bodies. And you think to yourself, thank God this is not real life. So Palmer now down to the field. Oh, no, I'm sorry. TGIS down to the field. And Palmer.
Palmer now moved up into fourth. Doug Barrow with a very, very good recovery drive so far up into P3 after having an incident with, Paul, with Palmer from behind, having to give that position back. Once again, he's very, very close. Oh, and all of a sudden, Elliot has dropped from having at least a three second gap down to just six tenths of a second. So he's had an incident somewhere on the track. have to serve at some point. So we continue to monitor that. Oh, and it looked like a very massive lag spike on my end, so I do apologize for that. As unfortunately I am home for the weekend, not at the college with the surprisingly better internet than what we have down here. Well, that's quite unusual. But of course when we do hopefully when we do get back when I get back into college that everything will be working fine. Oh, and there's a moment right here, and it looked like Palmer has a run for third. So he tucks back behind, trying to get a little more slipstream. Is Doug Barrow overshot it? No, he is not. And an interesting tactic is that Palmer is trying to serve the penalty in the corners. He's not losing that much time, but I guess in the game, in the game is functional. Sure, the penalty ball is breaking with that is not on the optimal line. And James Head is moved into six, so bar 27. Oh, and the damage on the front might and the side as well might have point to him having an incident somewhere on track. It happened on the mini map, but I wasn't able to capture it unfortunately. Like I said, these guys are really, really fun to watch here. The gap front for the leader is still about six tenths and slightly growing, but Harry's just not letting it, letting these guys go up to one another. What I like about these cars is that you can really throw them into the corner and really push them hard. The battle for the final step on the podium is still far from over. We're only, we're only halfway through this race. So about a quarter of the action. From over. The 1.5 second penalty now for Hall. And these two up front still not getting an inch to one another. A very clean race for these two guys up the front. Elliot having the pace, but of course having the incident as well. So hair raiser having, on average, the best performance of every one of these guys so far. But He's going to have to prove that pace by trying to match Elliot, who's actually weaving. So, you can only make one move, so Elliot's going to have to commit to this line. And if Hair Razor makes the move stick, right, so the corner has been the left. Elliot can make another move again into the final corner. Can Hair Razor send it into the final corner? He's actually going to hang on to the rear bumper of these guys. So, he will flip the cameras pretty very well. Some more proper racing action for all you guys. Hair Razor, two tenths down. This is the closest the Hair Razor has had on the leader so far. He's actually just set the fastest lap of the race. So Elliot not having a good, good exit out of that corner. Elliot has got to absolutely be late on the brakes. They actually hit each other onto the run to turn one. Can Elliot send it down the inside? These two are actually side by side against each other. And somehow Hair Razor just kept it on that racing line and he's not done for the switchback maybe Elliot is going to completely run him out of road and these two are still going at it they're still side by side going to the S's and Elliot just powering his way on through whoa my goodness me from the finish line out of the second S's these two are literally side by side and Hair Razor I have no idea in a car that provides so little downforce 
and on sport car compound tires and was able to keep that car on the racing surface. That is amazing stuff right there. And another battle still going on as well between Dunbarrow and Palmer for the final step of the podium. These two are far from over, but we continue to monitor the battle up front for the time being. So about six tenths now between these guys. And these guys still not far from over out also. So they're still having another cracking battle for the third and the center there. Doug Barrow might have been tapped wide out of the hairpin, and all of a sudden, Palmer is literally right alongside him. I think the damage might be on the rear, might be prominent. You can see the bump, you can see the paint chips off of the rear of the 13 Mazda and the 24 Mazda. Can he force a move down to the inside? Half a second penalty, so I assume he's had, a, had, he's had an incident with the 13. He's trying to be also careful not to hit the 13 Mazda so he doesn't have to slurp another penalty. Four touchdowns down now for the leaders. And once again, this guy's now going to the breaking zone. Can Hair Razor make him send a move? Oh, he's, he's definitely thinking about it. Don't get me wrong, he's definitely thinking about it. What about this battle right here? Doug Barrow now and Palmer. Palmer has cleared the penalty, so he can go in full attack mode, but he has to be careful about hitting him. Once again now, two tenths down. Can we see another phase of these guys going side by side? It is round two now. Elliot Fagner will be the one to defend alongside the pit wall. Hair Razor moves to the outside for turn one. It's gonna be a drag race right now. You can see in the background, Doug Barrow and Palmer are still fighting it out towards the pit wall. Elliot Fagner now keeps the inside clean and precise just like he needs it to. Oh, look at this now, Palmer almost getting, he, Palmer almost found a gap to the inside of turn one. That was very, very close action right there. Doug Barrow set a little wide, but Doug Barrow is still holding on to the decision. I don't, I thought that Palmer was gonna have the muscle of power through into turn one, but Doug Barrow somehow kept that third place position. This is insanely close racing for the top two, and then third and fourth for the podium right here. And I see Hair Razor is actually seventh in points. He got a podium in the first race of Brands Hatch, but he did have a good race afterwards in race two. So he's looking to make up some lost points here for this race. And Elliot now back on the inside of Hair Razor, who took the bleed briefly. Elliot is going to continue to keep playing aggressive and aggressive and aggressive. So, if Hair Razor wants any chance of a race win, he's got to understand what Elliot is doing within the corners, understand his, understand his driving style, and what can he do to try and get back a race win or even first place. Now to Spoon now for, once again, are absolutely just sending it. And just completely throttling it out of the corner. Elliot looked like he got a better corner. And these two are still far from over. Polymer now has to get back by Doug Barrow if he wants any form of trying to stay within reach of the points. Oh, look at this now. Elliot now. Oh, and this is going to be interesting right here. Elliot moves late. But can Hair Razor send it into the 130R? It is side by side here, separated by at least a whole wheel. Elliot now on the brakes, later on the brakes actually, gets by the 69 and the 64 and the 69. Still far from over. And Palmer has made the move into the chicane, so that's a position gain for the number 24. So Palmer still trying to find the points, but he wants another position. He's got to travel at least eight seconds. 8.9 now to these leaders. And this battle for first is still far from over once again. Can Doug Barrow make a move? 
Palmer now goes to the outside. It looked like there was one more, more than one move gain, but Palmer goes wide. Can Doug Barrow benefit from this? Maybe. Oh, and they're side by side going into the S's. Who's going to put the power down first? Palmer now has the inside, but Doug Barrow is going to suck it on the inside. Oh, and there's contact there. And Palmer was sent a little wide onto the grass, but keeps it on the course. And Doug Barrow is back up in the third. And Palmer now is absolutely going to be fuming within that driver's helmet. And this battle is still raging on after roughly 10 to 15 minutes. And if things shape up as they are, this battle will go the distance to the final lap of the race. Hair Razor has put an immaculate amount of pressure on the race leader, and Elliot has been amazing to withstand that pressure and just keep the lead. Of course, Elliot gets passed a couple times, passed by Hair Razor a couple times, but quickly afterwards, Elliot just shoots his way back up into the lead into a corner and just powers himself up to the straight. These two still going at it. James Head, oh, TGIS has had an incident somewhere, so now James Head has moved up into fifth. He's weaving a little bit, so that not that might have not been the cleanest exit out of the hairpin for these guys. But now all of a sudden we have there's to be another third battle in this race for fifth and sixth, and of course, unfortunately, bar 27 for him. If he remains as is, he will start for race two on in first. the line but hair razor is he gonna send it down and it's chicane elliot bagger is later on the brace so that's a good de defense call for elliot right there and he's just doing immaculate job right about now to stay within reach or i meant to say hair razor and it's a stay within reach i apologize for that these two are still going at it once again they are literally bumper to bumper on the pit wall on board now with the Mazda, the 24 of Palmer. What can they do? Is he going to force it completely? Doug Barrow moves briefly back. Is he going to force one on the outside? Maybe he's on a... Doesn't really benefit the guy on the outside, but can he make a switch move? Switch back? No, not yet. to this battle between James Head and TJS who has been formed into another third battle. So we have three groups of cars and all of these guys are literally fighting for position. This is insanely close racing for the top six out of seven racers. So just because we only have seven cars doesn't mean the action is far from over within the straight line motorsports Mazda MX-5 Cup Championship. Elliot Fagger going a little wide but still maintaining that lead. And James had now 1.1 seconds now ahead of TGIS, so he will be looking forward to get away. A strong recovery from James Head, who at that instant out of third, making it in the top five. About four minutes ago, James Head, six seconds down, but all not all is lost for James Head, unless it is a habits for the guys behind. I will continue to monitor the minimap with less than four minutes to go. Top two leaders. Far from over. And it looks like they might get about two more laps after this one. These guys are still completely going at it with each other. I can't believe this, actually. This is amazing, amazing racing that is going on here. I'm about to go on board here, and it looks like, oh, I state that, Hair Razor looked like a, to make a move. I thought he was going to send it, but that would have been amazing if he did. Elliot Fagner now, once again on the inside, can Hair Razor make a move, maybe? He always seems to drive in that line, but if he's going to want any chance of a run down into the final corner, he is going to have to play the aggressive card. 
guys we will get another lap for sure but I do not think these guys third and fourth will get another lap so these guys will only have one more lap to do it out based on lap times and James Head also has another chance fighting chance as well to make up some lost time oh Palmer now he's going to defend now there was contact made once again. 24 hanging on to third. And that is good right there for him as he successfully overtakes the, the 13 of Doug Barrow. And these guys will get this lap and one more. So the white flag, which flew for the guys down to third below, they will finish with another lap to go. So Doug Barrow now is going to be urgent to get back on that podium if he wants any shot at trying to make up some lost ground. And he will be, he, he will try and make up some lost points. In a very good, he's in a very good position, of course, but he is going to have to try and make up that lost ground, of course. Bar 27 coming across the line for his final lap, so he will finish on the same lap as the guys in third as well. Oh, and Palmer goes a little wide. Doug Barrow has to, had to check out for that. And it looked like that actually, with that penalty call, there might have been some contact right there between the top two. So, with the final lap to go, Doug Barrow is going to have to quickly cancel that penalty. Because James Head is now about five seconds now, and does not want to lose another position to the seven of James Head. These two are still far from over. The top two now still going at it. And by the times on the screen, these guys will have another lab. So the top two, they will have another lab, and this battle will come down to the wire for the top two. Palmer and Doug Barrow right now. Doug Barrow still has that penalty, which he's got to serve, which he's got to serve very, very quickly indeed. Palmer has done an incredible job having to actually follow 13 Mazda. He's done the work, but Doug Barrow now is going to try and force one down the inside for one last time. Can he force the issue? Oh, and Palmer almost getting it out of the astroturf. That might have, that will almost ended his race. And Doug Barrow, at the same time, has cleared that penalty. So that's an amazing run right there. Oh, but he gets it all wrong. And out of the final corner, these guys are side by side. And Palmer now, the time has expired. And they will get enough. They will finish this race. Palmer now will come home for third on a, a dramatic finale of that final lap. Doug Barrow in fourth. James Head fifth. TGIS. In sixth and bars, 27, who goes wide out of spoon, will come home for seventh. But the battle for the lead is still to be had between the top two right here. This is the closest that Hair Razor has been. Can he try and force a move? If he has to make a move, it has to be now on this lap if Hair Razor wants a potential race win in this race. And look at this, he's literally all over the back bumper, and he might have forced one a little open. But nothing doing there. And the battles. And this battle is definitely, definitely far from over, of course. Oh, he's cut the Eggner one, and that's giving him a 5 tenths penalty. So, which he's going to have to quickly serve that penalty. But Elliot has had a worse drive out of Eggner two going into the hairpin. goes wide a little bit to try and get the over-under momentum switch. He's got a bit of momentum, but the gap now is half a second, and Hairazer was still with two-tenths of a penalty to serve. This might be mitigating his chances of a potential first race win of the season. And this win, if Elliot can still hold on to it, will be his second win of the season in about three races. So a very, very strong performance so far for 64. Two tenths penalties still to be served for Hair Razor, but he will definitely hold on to second place with the race. Racers finishing. And Hair Razor's gonna pop 
Sophomore down to the inside, maybe. But Harry's got to play the defense card. If he wants any chance at a potential race win. He's definitely too far back, and he has not served that penalty, but Elliott's had a worse drive. Oh, and he's hit him, obviously, so that's not good right there. But coming aground for the final corner one last time, and will be the 64 of Elliott Wagner, who takes the second win, his second win of the season at race one at Suzuka. Harry's are still with that penalty of one second, so unfortunately, it unfortunately did not matter. But the race winner, Race one goes to Elliott Wagner for pole position and led that race to a checkered flag finish. So we will now commence our podium finishing post race. Sorry, my English is terrible. We will commence, wait for them to join in, obviously. And I will make the notice. So now we wait for our podium finishers to come in and we will start off with the man in second place who put the most amount of pressure that I think I've any put, seen anyone put on for a whole race. Hair Razor, how would you describe that very intense race between race one and <laughs> very, Elliot Wagner? Very exhausting. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine with the fact that you, know, you were putting a lot of pressure on him, but of course Elliot... He held his lines very, very well, and unfortunately, he had the better race than you did. How would you, how how would you describe him fighting against him today? Well, Elliot did a really good job. I mean, I, I did try and pass him on a few occasions, but I just couldn't hold uh, hold the car, and uh, Elliot got to the better racing line. And uh, I did push him and push him, and uh, I think he did really, really well. To be honest, to be under that much pressure. <laughs> yeah, it looked like. You got past him a couple times, but it looked like he quickly got back right up ahead of you. In, ah, you did, yes. In yes. this race. So, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it looked like it was a very, very interesting race. At one point, we actually had three battles for the top six going on between you two. We had Palmer and Doug Barrow who were going on. And then we had James had a TJS for a little bit who were battling on as well. So, exciting racing all along. And we have our next podium interview interviewee. Of course, in the hands of SLM Polymer. Polymer, another strong showing. It looked like a very tough day for you against Doug Barrow as well, but in the end, a very, very dramatic end of the race. How would you describe your race to the to the fans? Uh, definitely eventful. Um, yeah, it all started with like the contact with uh, Doug. He went into the back of me at Vegna too, and then I guess it was hard hard but fair from there. I kept getting um, penalties, which was annoying, but as soon as I got into my rhythm, I managed to stop doing that. Yeah, it looked like at one point, uh, Doug Barrow did hit you off at Dengner 2, and it looked like he slowed up uh, drastically as well to uh, hand that position back because he knew what he did wrong, and obviously you guys fought your way back past James Head, TGIS, and Barr, and of course, it kind of just reset the playing field between you two, obviously. Yeah, um, I'm really happy with that sportsmanship from uh, Doug. Um, it definitely like shows the um, professional side of this uh, championship. Well, sounds like very good stuff for Palmer as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Elliot is uh, joining because of the fact that we are on a tight schedule. But we do have race two coming up here very, very shortly indeed. So please stay tuned for that within the Straight Line Motorsports. GT3 Championship. We do have your podium podium finishers. Elliot Fagner taking race one win at Suzuka. Hair Razor and Palmer taking second and third, completing the podium. And we will see you guys next time for race two at Suzuka. Cheers.